I done did it again. But I swear this time it'll be the last time for a while because I am going to be a saving girly. I am going to save my money, but it's another book haul. Okay, get settled. <laughs> Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome to the channel. So, um, like mentioned, we're doing another book haul today. I think I have 28 books, but that said, this will also be the last one I think for at least a couple of months because I will be moving. It'll be a mess for a little bit. I don't have a lot of books coming in currently, and I don't think I'm gonna buy a whole lot more before I get to my new place. So I really wanted to do it today. This is pre-recorded a little bit, but I'm really excited because books. <laughs> As per usual, I'll be leaving links to the books in the description box, so if you want to check them out, you can do so through the links. And if you want to check out a specific genre, I am leaving chapters in the timeline as well, so if you prefer to hear about adult fantasy more than YA fantasy, which is what we're starting with, you can skip ahead. But enough talk, I think? Maybe? Yes? Let's get started. <laughs> so first of all, YA fantasy. To see, we're starting out with a special edition from Illumicrate of Chain of Thorns, which is the third one in the The Last Hours trilogy by Cassandra Clare. So this is the newest, this is the final installment in that trilogy, and that trilogy is the newest addition to the Shadowhunter universe. I can't tell you what this trilogy is about because I've not read it. I'm currently on the Dark Artifices, so it'll be a little bit before I get to this trilogy. However, the real reason that I wanted, because I don't have the first two in this edition, I only have the standard UK editions, but the naked ones. So the real reason that I wanted this mini box, it was actually called, not just the edition, is I'll show you. It was because of these dust jackets, because the UK editions, like I mentioned, are actually by default naked. They don't have dust jackets. And these are done by Rosie Thorns 88 whom I love, like all her art, I adore it. So I just kind of like made a quick decision to <laughs> get these dust jackets. I think they're stunning. Look at this art, it's so good. So that's the first one. Then we have Chain of Iron, I think the sequel is called. And it uh, it's just, it's so charming and just cute. I love her style so much, but I don't know who these characters are. She looks like Tezza though from the Infernal Devices. She looks like Tezza. I'm just saying. Is it Tezza? Like, I don't know. I have questions. Why is she dancing with a ghost? You know? Anyway. And then lastly, we have Chain of Thorns, which is purple or pink because it goes with this one. You can probably tell that the first one they did was Chain of Gold was green and then Chain of Iron was blue. Chain of Thorns is pink and so the dust jacket fits with that. And we have the last characters here on the back. So super cute. Really adore the style that Rosie Thorne's art has. So I'm very excited to have them. But yeah, I don't really know what to do with this one. I'll figure it out. Then we have a Fairy Loot special edition, which is City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaefer. And this has, I like to show off the special editions in my book hauls. So you get to see both, you get to see all the customizations. This has a colorway change. I think the original is like, teal red. It also has printed edges as you can see right here with a derodactyl. A pterodactyl, yes, in the middle, a dinosaur. And it also has naked art, or <laughs> naked art, <laughs> nude art, anyway. It has art on the cover that looks like this, has a nice, like, misty kind of city vibe to it. Plus, it also has end papers that look like this, and in the back, they look different. And I really love the vibe of this art. I really love the whole like city city vibe. I am a sucker for city vibes. It's just, yes, it either has to be like big city or super foresty. There's no in the middle. It has to be one or the other. And I'm like, this is speaking to my soul. So City of Nightmares. This is like, think Strange the Dreamer mixed with Gotham and um, vampires. And our girl is just kind of like thrown into the middle of everything. As far as I've been told, this is chaotic. Like it says, she uh, has to avoid becoming a victim because people are going missing. So she's lying low among the friends of the rest 
hateful soul. A questionable organization that may or may not be a cult. And then there's something about a vampire who's trying to eat her or something. Or maybe wants to eat her. As in like, yeah, you get it. Okay, good. So, bit of a fun one. I'm excited to read that at some point. I've been told it's chaotic, so I am expecting full-on chaos. Then we have an Alcrate exclusive, which is Revel by Lisa Mia Smith. And this also has a redesigned, or it doesn't also have a redesigned. It has a redesigned cover. The back looks like this. The original has like a star kind of thing in the middle. There's a lot going on on the original. Alcrate has been doing a lot of customizations so we have like a full except from edges for this one at least we have like a full thing going on with foil as well on the naked cover and pages that look like this they're the same in the back and then inside dust jacket art that looks like this nice vibe for this one as well he has like insanely blue eyes like you could see those from a mile away crazy blue eyes and she's just like yes take me with you <laughs> I cannot for the life of me remember what this is about though, which is awkward. On the island of Chamont, magic flows like bootlegged champagne and fantasies can be bought for the price of a gemstone. Lux Revel, or Revel, star of her family's fantastical show, knows the splendor is just an illusion. With prohibition threatening their livelihood, her family struggles to make a living watering down champagne and patching holes in their sequined costumes. So when the son of Chamon's wealthiest family makes Lux an offer, all the liquor the revels need to stay in business, in exchange for posing as his girl and helping him become mayor, she can't refuse. Ooh, fake dating. <laughs> the moment Jameson ports his foot in Chamon, he can't shake the feeling of fami familiarity. I can't say that word for whatever reason. That was my third try. I'm not it's moving on. An orphan with as few memories as gemstones, he's desperate to learn what happened to his parents. But as he delves into the island's secrets, he risks angering the wrong person and discovering a truth that just might break his heart. When Lux and Jameson accidentally meet, the sparks that fly are more than her magical enchantments. But keeping secrets from powerful people is a dangerous game. One that could destroy them both. I have no clue still. Fake dating, but he's not the he's not the romantic lead. There's a twist to it. Interesting. Then we have ooh another Illuminate edition, which is super foily and it's gonna mess up my camera and the lighting and everything. But it's Lies We Sing to the Sea by Sarah Underwood. This is also a redesigned cover. The original is like it's quite clearly inspired by the original. The original also has a lot of like lines and foil. I believe it also has a woman's face on the cover as far as I can remember just less foily like this is a lot a lot of foil my camera does not like it I like it but my camera doesn't the back looks like this so it has like a quote and then it has these very cool edges that I am loving the water with the ships lately but we have another one of those <laughs> naked cover looks like this it's the same in the front as in the back and then we have front end papers that look like this with a signature and end papers in the back that look like this and they have foil as well as you can probably tell so this is like sapphic Greek mythology retelling but it was first marketed as a retelling of the Odyssey and it's really not. It's a retelling of this like one person or something that you meet in the Odyssey who's a part of 12 maidens that are being sacrificed. I can't exactly remember what the premise of is from the Odyssey because it's like a very minor character. So death was only the start of her story in the cursed kingdom of Ithaca. So these maidens are being sacrificed to Poseidon and we follow one of the girls who's supposed to be sacrificed as a gift to this god. It's funny because I've just read Circe so now I'm like looking at all these names in a whole different light. In the cursed kingdom of Ithaca, each summer brings the hanging of 12 maidens, a gift to the vengeful Poseidon. For 17 years, Leto has escaped the curse's mark, until now. But death does not claim Leto. Instead, she wakes on a mysterious island greeted by the immortal Melantho. She tells Leto that Ithaca's sacrifices are the legacy of the great Odysseus, payment for the lives of Queen Penelope 12 maids cast into the ocean centuries ago. Leto has the chance to break the curse. She just has to kill the prince of Ithaca. But Prince Matthias also seeks to free his kingdom from the curse. Torn by her growing love for both Melantho and Matthias, Leto must choose a path to follow by breaking the curse that will save thousands of lives. But if they fail, then the tides of fate will drown them all. It's so funny because like... <laughs> 
Cersei has a lot to do with like uh, both Od Odysseus but also Penelope. The sun is not mentioned but I don't- is the sun like an actual character? Like I don't know. I need to do some research. I think it's fun because I've just read Cersei so. Then we have a book that I'm currently reading and it's a fairy loot special edition. I always have a lot of special editions when I do these uh, these book hauls so just you yeah, know that's a thing. But it's Seven Faceless Saints which was the March book I think. This has a redesigned cover as well kind of like this is an element from the original but it looks different the back looks like this the original is like super white so i think i actually i don't know <laughs> i think maybe i like the original cover a little bit better but also i really want a special one a special cover for my special edition but the thing is it wasn't very you can't really do a color variant of it because it was very focused on being full white so like what would you do anyway the naked cover looks like this it has red foil the back looks like this we also have printed edges that are basically from the original cover we have printed edges on the front or at the top and in the bottom we have some art in the front front end papers looking like this back end papers look like this and as for this one so i'm currently reading it actually and i feel like it was marketed to be a lot darker than it actually is it's supposed to be like a dark fantasy murder mystery i can tell you like 30 percent into the book it's really not that dark like there's not a whole lot going on with the saints and this and stuff but we follow two people who have been dating in the past who are one is like yeah she's a disciple of one of the seven I think there's actually six saints or maybe seven I don't know um, but she's a disciple of one of them so she worships patience and then the other is basically an officer and so he has been charged with uh, figuring out who's done this murder because there are more well more murders than just one and she for some reason also really wants to solve this so they team up despite kind of hating on each other a little bit because they have a past and that's basically what there is to it it's supposed to be like super fall like a brutal killer yeah they have their eyes removed for example but it's not like i don't know i feel like it could have been darker <laughs> but that's what uh, that's just my personal opinion right now 30 percent into the book it might change i don't know but um Seven Faceless Saints. This is super tiny as well. If we compare it to the small hardback, it's very small. It's smaller than a smaller hardback. So, or it's smaller than a small hardback. It is indeed a smaller hardback. Then we have one, a sequel for a book that I've actually not read, but I found this very, very cheap used. So I got Vicious Spirits by Kat Cho, which is the sequel to Wicked Fox, which is about a gumiho, also called, you might know it as a nine-tailed fox, but it's also called a kitsune in Japanese. And in it, we follow our gumiho who basically eats the souls or something of men or like something like that and she's supposed to say secret but then she gets busted because this guy is in trouble and she decides to save him or something like that and it's a whole thing. So I've heard many lovely things about the first one. I found this super cheap so I was like I could not. Like I have a good feeling that I'm gonna like the first one so I, I thought it was justified that I get the sequel even though I haven't read it yet. <laughs> it's wrapped up somewhere on my shelves right now so as soon as I find it and I read through it I'll be able to go right into the sequel which I actually really like doing so maybe it's also for the better. <laughs> then we have another All Crate edition which is Midnight Strikes by Ziba Shanaz which is completely redesigned. It's also naked. There is no dust jacket on it. This is not like, it's not, it's golden, but it's not foily in that way. I think the lighting might make it look super shiny, but it's not actually super shiny. Like I would definitely be very careful reading this edition because I'm scared that this is gonna rub off. The back looks like this, it has a quote on it. And then we have very foily end papers that look like this. A lot going on, but I really like the end papers. We also have gilded edges, as you can tell, that are gold. They look nice. I never show, I keep forgetting, but signature and also bound in letter, which is pretty cool. And as for this book, this doesn't have a synopsis in it because it's naked, so we're in trouble because I do not remember what this is about at all. <laughs> and so, Goodreads is gonna save me in this situation. A provincial girl must work with a roguish prince to stop an attack on the royal family and escape a nightmarish curse that forces them to relive the same night again and again. Right, that's pretty cool, right? I like the concept, so. 
That's why Midnight Strikes. This also is kind of funny because I did go through the end chapters, not like I didn't read it, <laughs> but whenever, like it always says chapter one, chapter one, chapter one. All the chapters say chapter one. <laughs> see, you can see here. So it says nine and then it says chapter one. If I go to 10, it says 10 and then it says chapter one. It's kind of funny. It just says chapter one over and over and over until maybe the end. <gasps> chapter four. Exciting. Then as for our last, I don't actually fully know what this is about. The last YA fantasy book I have is Malice by Heather Walter, which is the first one in a duology. Sapphic, I believe. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be sapphic. It says, once upon a time, a wicked fairy cursed a line of princesses to die. You've heard this before, haven't you? The handsome prince, the true love's kiss. It's utter nonsense. No one in Briar cares what happens to our princess. I thought I didn't either. And then I met her. So it's like a retelling of... I think it's Maleficent, but she falls for the princess. Pretty cool. I've heard many good things about this as well, so I'm very excited. A villain to adore. A book from a villain's point of view is pretty cool. And I think this is our secondary pick in the book club as well for April? No, May. So I'll be reading this next month with them. I'm very excited for it. Once upon a time, there was a villain. I don't know, I feel like more people should, more authors should write books from villain's point of views. I'm just saying. I would, I would eat it up. So those were the YA fantasy books. We're moving on to a little bit of new adult. I'm gonna take these down first though. So I only have two new adult books and I bought these last month while reading our buddy read for the book club. By the way, if you wanna check out the book club, there's a link to it in the, in the pinned comment. But I loved it so much that I bought them, I bought the sequels <laughs> while reading it. Thought it was so good. I am really loving the lead character in these books. So we have Children of Fallen Gods, which is the sequel, the second book. And then we have Mother of Death and Dawn, which is the third and last installment in this trilogy. They're by Carissa Broadbend. These are huge paperbacks because they're independently published, which I actually kind of... I love that I have them. Like, I love that I've bought them and supported an NDT author. I need to do that more. I don't know. It makes me feel good to have supported them, you know? You should do that more too if you got the money at least, like no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> but I love the idea of supporting indie authors, so I'm happy that I'm able to. In this trilogy though, we follow Tizana, who is a former slave on the run after something happened and um, she found herself just, well, needing to run. So she ends up running to this like establishment or whatever you wanna call it that is called The Order in hopes of them wanting to help her. But when she gets there, they're like, well, you need to pay us back some how so they decide that she has to train to become one of their soldiers and the way that they do this is because she has magic she is set up with a mentor and so they train for a while until she has to go through some trials the thing is though that she's set up with this mentor who is very reluctant to mentor anyone including Tasana. so the two of them kind of start out with a rocky relationship they're not really Tasana is quite like headstrong like she's gonna get this done and her her mentor is a little bit like, I don't want to see anybody in the world, please leave. I just want to live out here with my flowers, alone, away from everyone else. Thank you. So that's a thing. But slowly they get to know each other and they find, find out that they actually have something in common because neither of them really trust the order and as the story goes on, it turns out that they have a very good reason not to. And then there's something about, you know, more magic and stuff. So I'm not gonna tell you too much. It's just a very lovely slow burn fantasy romance, very heavy on training and magic and it's lovely. I enjoyed it so much. A lot of action in this one as well and they're cute. They're really cute, the two of them. So would definitely recommend looking into the first one which is called Daughter of No Worlds. I enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> and then we have my adult fantasy. So let's get started. I am so excited to show these to you even though you might be like, but Rosa, you showed us another set in the last book haul. Yes, I did, but <laughs> I ended up getting my hands on the Illumicrade set of Chaos, Roots of Chaos by Samantha Shannon and these sold out so quickly. I don't even know how I managed. I got both the, the Broken Binding set and the Illumicrate set in the first round. I think I've found my talent. I'm just very good at buying things that are meant to sold it, sell out very quickly, like concert tickets. Never failed. Books. 
Never failed. It's my, it's my, uh, it's my talent. I'm good at spending money. I'll take it. Now I just need to get good at earning money. <laughs> but anyway, so we have, of course, a, actually an exclusive cover because the foil is different on this one. I believe it's originally blue because I believe the original heart cover actually has blue foil like this one does. I tapped. <laughs> I tapped this so much. I loved it so much, but like, <laughs> look at the tabs. <laughs> That's a lot. Yep, so should probably tell you that I'm really happy to have this. And it looks like this on the back. If you can read the cover, feel free to right here. Then we have designed by, I know it's Chatty Nora. We have these beautiful, beautiful edges with the sword. I think it's called Escalon if I'm recalling correctly. At least I think it's Chatty Nora who did them, I'm pretty sure. My favorite part though, I think, or maybe the end papers are my favorite, I don't know. Do I have a favorite part? <laughs> or is it just the whole thing? I don't know. But we have stuff Stunning art on the cover, which has some foil as well. It's a dragon, Ascalon, looks gorgeous. This is a mean dragon, an evil one, by the way. I know this because it has wings, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So it's an evil dragon and it's just gorgeous. I'm gonna leave this off though, because you'll see in a second. But we also have end papers that look like this that are stunning. Like I literally opened this book and I gasped. I gasped so, so loudly. Oh, these are so beautiful. They're so gorgeous. So, all right, we have uh, you'll understand if you read the book. And then we have A Day of Fall and Night, which again, I think also has an exclusive cover. The title is in silver. I'm so happy that these don't have text in the moon. <laughs> because the original cover does. We have a quote on the back and hair on my hand. Okay, we have a quote on the back right here that you are free to read if you want to. I just look like this. And I think this is a spear that is supposed to be one of the character's weapons. So their name is Tuva, I'm pretty sure. I haven't read the book yet, but I think Samantha Shannon wrote something like that. And then on this one, we have one of the good dragons because this doesn't have, this doesn't have wings. So this is what the front looks like. This is what the back looks like. We have end paper art. That is also stunning, gorgeous, beautiful. I forgot to mention both of these books are signed. I am obsessed. Like I'm so happy that I have this set. It's ridiculous. I love it so much. Oh. It's another, it's another sword. What sword is that? The swords are not the same. Oh, the swords are not the same. I don't know. But the reason that I wanted to keep this off, like the dust jackets off, is because I am not one of those people who look at this and think, okay, that dragon is definitely sniffing its own butt. But I can see why you would be, but I'm not. <laughs> so these fit together like this. And also on the other side, they fit together like this, which is pretty cool. Or I suppose, you know, you could do like this. I don't know, I think that is, that, I think that's pretty cool. It's a nice touch. Now I just need to get a copy of A Day of Fall and Night that I can actually read and tab because there's no way I am tabbing edges that look like this because it would ruin the motif. And for these books, you really need to tap because there's a lot of information, a lot of world building. It's very slowly, beautifully built up. So I personally like to tap so it's a little bit easier to go back in the book and check out like a character's name or what their backstory is or if there's like a story that is referenced that is referenced again further ahead in the book. I just like to do that. I actually am considering doing a video on how to tab and editate so that might happen if you are interested, let me know. But those were my Roots of Chaos books. They're stunning, beautiful. <laughs> I'm so happy that I have them. <laughs> Gorgeous. Then we have another fairy loot edition that is also stunning, beautiful. I, <laughs> The Adventures of Amina El Sirafi by Shannon Chakraborty. I read this as well. It's such a good book, by the way. Like fast paced, at least like two thirds of the book or three quarters of the book, very fast paced. It's the first one in the trilogy, I believe. So it's to be a little bit slower, you know? because there's a lot of characters to introduce and some backstory and all of that. The world as well, but very funny. Like Amina as a lead character, love her so much. So this one is a fairy loot edition. It has a redesigned cover, which I believe is done by the same artist who did the UK cover, the just the standard UK cover. The back looks like this. I don't really know, like, I don't think those actually had anything to do with anyone. I can't remember. But also, also in case you did not notice, this is a ship because it took me a while to actually notice. But that might just be me. <laughs> I don't know, could very well be me. Spine looks like this. My favorite part though, well, there's a lot going on underneath the dust jacket, but look at these edges. They're so good. They are so funky. 
I love them a lot. I think they're great. I think the color choices are great. They did a good job on the edges. Naked cover looks like this. Quite a lot going on here too. And the back, I think, is about the same. So looks like this. Spine matches the dust jacket spine. It's just super foily. And we have apparently a digital signature. Very, very cool. But we have front end paper art with Amina over here. And it's a map. And I love it. I love maps <laughs> in my books. And then the back. We have also the map, but with a cat. The cat is in the book, so that makes sense. I love that they're foily as well. Like, foily map on the end papers. So good. Did I completely forget to tell you guys what Roots of Chaos is about? Yeah. Think big bad dragon and people trying to stop it and a lot of history. I think that's what I usually say when, when I want to explain what it's about. But there's a lot to the story, so... It's hard to, to tell. Amina, though, is about, well, Amina. <laughs> and Amina is the captain of a pirate ship, or at least she was, until she got a daughter and decided to settle down. But then one day, she's approached by a former shipmate's mom, who's like, I need you to save my granddaughter because she's been taken by someone. And I'll pay you a lot of money if you do so. Plus, you get the opportunity to become a legend. And there might also be another incentive to why she should leave for this uh, for this job or this quest. And then it turns into a whole thing, something about an artifact and stuff. I don't wanna say too much, but it's definitely more than just, like the job is a little bit bigger than just bringing home this girl, as it turns out. And something about a demon as well, because her ex-husband, no, her husband is a little bit peculiar. <laughs> So there's a lot going on in Amina. And Amina herself is so cool. She is a female captain who knows that it's hard to be a woman on a pirate ship, especially as the captain, because you know, there's, what are the superstitions and stuff? Like women on pirate ships is actually supposed to bring bad luck and stuff. So imagine being the captain. But Amina also really wants to just be a legend and be great and might be struggling a little bit at home, not really having a lot of income and stuff. So. Yeah. We have another Fairylude adult book, which is The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten. This was the March book, actually. So the cover looks a lot like the original cover. The text is just pink, whereas the original cover, I think it's white. This though has beautiful edges, beautiful edges. Mine are super off-centered here um, on these, this side, but they are actually sending me a replacement also because this does have a little bit of like a, there's a situation going on on this book. It has some marks and stuff, so they were kind enough to send it to me. It's currently on its way. But other than that, we have art on the naked cover with foil printed onto it so you can see like a lot of foil and then art foil art yes it's a it's a fun effect in the camera actually now that i look at it because it's very visible in the camera the, the view over here the viewfinder but not so much in real life that's kind of funny anyway the spine looks like this very cool. I like this like glass stained kind of look. It reminds me a little bit of The Last Tale of the Flower Bride. We have end paper art in the front that looks like this. A super dark vibe to it. And then in the back, I believe they're different. Yes. Also a super dark vibe to the this these end papers. These? Yes. I like this like line of light that is around them. It's cool. And to top it off, this also came with a reversible dust jacket. So we have some art here if you're not really a fan of the original cover. I don't, I kind of like it, the original cover, I'm not gonna lie. But since it's also not a colorway change, it's at, least, at least as far as I can tell, or maybe it is, maybe the original is like purple. This, this is pink, I don't know. <laughs> But it's a subtle change at least. I appreciate that they added a reversible dust jacket art design so that you can change it to something very different if you want to. As for the story in this, I keep forgetting what this is about, which is awkward because I have an arc of it and I should definitely read it. <laughs> when Lore was 13, she escaped a cult in the catacombs beneath the city of Delaire. In the 10 years since, she's lived by one rule, don't let them find you. Easier said than done when her magic ties her to the city. Yeah, that sucks. Mordem, so her magic, 
is a magic born from death, and it's a high-priced and illicit commodity in Delair. Laura has made a living running poisons for the city's underbelly, but when a run goes wrong, she's captured by the king and expects to be sent to the pyre. But the king has different plans. Laura is thrust into the sainted king's glittering court, where no one can be believed and even fewer can be trusted. Guarded by Gabriel, a duke turned monk, and continually running up against Bastion, the king's ne'er ne'er do well heir. I don't have the accent for this. <laughs> Laura tangles in politics, religion, and forbidden romance as she attempts to navigate a debog debauched? I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> An opulent society. You know those words that you've read, but you just, you've never really heard them? Or maybe you have like once or twice, so like you don't remember how to pronounce them? I'm like, debauchery? Debauched. Debauched. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not making fun of English. It's just hard to be duolingo sometimes. <laughs> it's so hard to be duolingo. <laughs> But the life she left behind in the catacombs is catching up with her, and even as Lore makes her way through the sainted court above, danger from below draws ever closer. I really need to stop talking in the middle of reading out loud synopses because I know it's confusing, but I can't. I need to comment on things. It's just how I work. <laughs> anyway, Fox Love King. Kind of nervous for it because I, I think I want to love it, but I didn't love for the wolf, so I'm a little bit nervous. We'll see. Then I got the fourth book. Like, this situation is definitely ridiculous. Like, I'll be the first one to admit that this is ridiculous. But I have a very valid reason as well. So I bought the fourth one in the Stormlight Archive. I have not finished the first book. The bit that I have read, though, loved it. So we'll just say. Like, I'm vibing with the world and the characters and the way that it's written and stuff. The thing is, I am scared that these covers are not going to continue because <laughs> they're doing these like small naked hardbacks that are split up into two so like Rhythm of War would be two hardbacks and they're a format size that I don't like. I like these big chunky hardbacks so in a panic I basically ordered this one just in case they don't they stop producing them. <laughs> so here we have it. Um, but I cannot tell you what Stormlight really is about. It's just epic fan fantasy, which is why it's hard to tell. But there's a lot of world building going on. Politics, kings, prophecies. Or not prophecies per se, but like dreams, I want to say. A lot of characters, like a whole lot. Definitely one of those books that you should, um, that you should tap a lot. See, this is like when it comes to like slow, slowly built books when it, and like plot and world. It's just very difficult to say what it's about. And then add on top of that, this is a series, this is a standalone. It's like, I know how this ended. I still don't know how this ends. It's difficult with epic fantasy, but very good what I've read of the first one so far. I think I might start over when I continue reading it just because I'm in the mood for that. So yeah. Oh, but these editions, by the way, I forgot to show. These editions are super cool because they have end paper art, like character art on the end papers, which I'm a fan of. And not only that, you can literally take off the dust jacket and there's a map and I love that. So you can actually have the map lying in front of you when you're reading the book. Genius. That's so good. So I think I like that character as well. I think I like her. Is it because she's a redhead? No. I would never favorize a character just because she's a redhead. No. So I also got um, Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson, by the way, I forgot to say. Also by Brandon Sanderson, and this is one of the secret projects that he's had through Kickstarter, but this is just the regular edition. I know the Kickstarter edition is stunning. I've seen it. Absolutely beautiful. Really love this edition as well. The cover is pretty cool. So it has end paper that looks, end papers that look like this. They're so good. I feel like this is, oh wait, I haven't seen this. She's stunning. What the, absolutely stunning. I love that. Okay. I didn't see that before. This book has like a vibe to it that I think I'm gonna really like. Oh, if you want like an explanation of the whole Kickstarter thing, read this bit. I will let you write, <laughs> I will let you read it instead of reading it out loud. But as for the synopsis, the only life Tress has known on her island home in an emerald green ocean has been a simple one with the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway lands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and disaster strikes, must stow away on a ship and seek the sorceress of the deadly Midnight Sea. Amid the spore oceans where pirates abound, can Trez leave her simple life behind and make her own place sailing a sea where a single drop of water can mean instant death? Question mark. I realize I ended that off on a not a question, but... <laughs> 
question mark. So I think I'm gonna really like this story. I don't know, I think I'm vibing with it. Very excited to go into it at some point, but she's gonna get wrapped up and then I'll read it once I pull the number. And then we have one more, this is a fantasy. It's Morning Star by Pierce Brown, which I've already showed off in a book haul before. Just not, I've showed it off as a paperback, but I have the first and the sequel as hardbacks. I got the paperback for Christmas and I just prefer having the matched set. So I found this very cheap as a used copy. Super yellow pages, I don't care. The whole like, it has a little rip in the dust jacket, but aside from that, it's doing good. So, or it's like in a good condition-ish. The only thing is that someone ripped off a page and I don't know why. <laughs> Like, why is the first page gone? Did it used to have a signature that was ripped out? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I have questions. I don't know what's going on here. It's kind of funny with used books like that, that sometimes you get like, in one of my books, I think it was The Raven Boys, there was a receipt in it, but a receipt for the book, which was also signed or there was a drawing in it. I don't know. I bought another book. I can't remember which one it was, but that one was signed. Was it Lady Midnight? It might've been Lady Midnight. Yeah, Lady Midnight has this like funny page here, which I don't, like, I don't know. It's funny. I don't, it's just funny buying used books. As long as they're in good condition, I, actually really like to buy hardcovers as used copies but I cannot really fully tell you what this one is about. Red Rising though is oh uh, gosh I've forgotten actually what the synopsis is but think like killing games <laughs> basically. I'm actually really excited to read it but now that I've wrapped it up I think it's gonna take a while before I find it among all the numbers. Adult sci-fi as far as I can remember but might also be YA. I don't know I I think it sounds too brutal to be YA, but what would I know? Hunger Games was also <laughs> was also YA, so. But those were my adult fantasy and sci-fi, so we're moving on to a lot of romance, like a whole lot, because I bought a lot, a lot, lot, yep. So throughout the last month, I have basically been in like, in the mood to just, I went on Book Depository because they're closing down and I just ordered a lot of romance books because I was in the mood for it. I just went like down a rabbit hole and I just ordered a lot of different ones. So I have I have a fair amount to show you. We're starting out with an Illumicrate or Afterlight special though, which is For Her Consideration by Amy Spaulding, which comes in a colorway change. The original I think is blue instead of purple. It has this beautiful like sunset color way to the edges with a palm tree. Mine is a, like slightly wonky. Actually, no, it's not. It just has a bump on it, which is fine because it's a tree. <laughs> tree trunks can have bumps on them. Also has this super cute oil motif on the naked cover which matches the original cover and then has these sunset colored end papers with small black stars on them and is it signed it is in pink <laughs> i usually keep my synopses for romance books pretty simple because i think it's more about the tropes to be honest this one though is about our lead girl who i believe is her who is a struggling writer, screenwriter or something like that. She's been writing romance and then she's kind of like, because of a heartbreak, she's not really doing well at that. So it surprises her when she meets this actress out of the blue, who then proceeds to tell her that she should definitely start writing again. And she's kind of intimidating to her as well. So there's a little bit of like, she's just super intimidating. <laughs> A little bit bossy as well. Very, very popular actress. And so through her, she basically rediscovers her love for writing romance and what else was it, was it she mentioned? Friends and her dreams of script white writing. So that might come into play considering she's an actress and stuff. So I don't know what for her consideration means, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> if you could explain what it means, let me know. <laughs> I don't know. Then we have by... Krista and Becca Ritchie, Addicted to You, which is the first one in a series of, I believe, companion novels, but I could be wrong about that. This is about a person who is addicted to sex and also a person who is addicted to alcohol. And the two of them have kind of been like fake dating throughout the years, covering for each other whenever like the dude who's addicted to alcohol wouldn't show up to work or the girl whenever she had guys leaving the apartment they lived together, I believe. So they're just kind of like, finding a way to explain all of this stuff away. And then it turns out that um, once they start thinking a little bit too much about it, they might actually like each other and stuff like that. I don't think this is a rom-com, just wanna say. I think this is definitely hitting on heart material, just, just so, just so you know, or at least I think so. But I'm kind of intrigued. So I found it and I got it and we'll see. 
We'll, we'll see. It says exclusive bonus material. Two best friends, liars, lovers, addicts, one epic love story. So I also got, even though I haven't read her other books, but I got Throttled by Lauren Asher. When I tell you that I went down a rabbit hole, I mean it. I have no way to justify that I have this, but it's a book and I wanted the book, so I bought it. Is that justification enough? I feel like it is. Anyway, Maya. This is about Noah Slade, who is a Formula One legend in the making. He is focused, unapproachable, ruthless on and off the track. A man with walls higher than the Grand Canyon. And my brother's new teammate. And then she says, I want more of the prince who disguises himself as the villain. But while I crave a happy ending, he wants to destroy his. And then from his point of view, he says, Maya Elatora is a forbidden temptation because she's his friend's sister yeah an ambitious postgrad i should stay far away from and chaos wrapped with a bow <laughs> we're a ticking time bomb about one wrong move away from exploding i want to trip the wire detonating together in passion and pain because in the end all's fair in lust and war <laughs> so as far as i know Lauren Asher's books are very steamy, slightly smutty, so I'm expecting nothing less from this, but that's all I'm expecting because I haven't read her other books, like I wouldn't know. <laughs> then we have, actually let's do this one first, Travis by Mia Sheridan. So this is like kind of a sequel to Archer's Voice, which I read and I loved. Travis is a dick. <laughs> Travis is kind of the villain in Archer's voice, at least one of the villains. I feel like there are definitely... Travis's mom is the villain, but Travis is definitely entering villain territory. So he has a redemption arc, maybe in this one. And other than that, I don't really know what it's about, to be honest. I don't really want to know. I just hope that Travis can redeem himself in some way or another because otherwise I'm gonna have a very hard time reading this book, I'm just saying. But I really, really loved Archer's voice, so when I saw this... I was like, what? Why would you write about Travis? And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a chance. We'll see how it goes. And then one, oh, Travis, no. Rude. Now you got extra stuff to redeem yourself for. Stop, don't, don't do it again. It actually kind of hurt. Anyway, another Mia Sheridan book, which is Most of All You. I believe this might be related to, what's it called? The pink one. I actually forgot what it's called, which is kind of awkward. It's wrapped up somewhere on my shelves, so I can't even like see it. So anyway, <laughs> this is about two broken people that find each other and then have to learn to trust and love each other instead of building up thicker walls than they've already built around themselves. So... At least that's what I've gathered from the synopsis, but we will see. We'll see. Then we have, I don't actually know what this is about other than It's Flawless by Elsie Silver, which is the first one in the Chestnut Springs series. All I know is that there's a cowboy. <laughs> and I was like, I don't have anything with cowboys. And so I ordered it because I pre-ordered it because they're released with new covers, which thank you because the original ones have people on them and I don't like that, not even one bit. Drawn people, fine. Actual people, like photographs, no. Big no. We don't like it. And by we, I mean me. <laughs> so I decided to get it. Now I'm seeing it everywhere. Like I had not seen it anywhere before and now I'm seeing it all over Instagram. And I don't know, it's kind of creepy, but at the same time, maybe it's just because they're being re-released. I don't know. But I'm gonna just, as a quick, the rules were simple. Keep my hands off his daughter. But now I'm stuck with her. There's only one bed. And well, rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. I don't have anything with cowboys. I thought it would be funny. We'll see how it goes. And then if I like it, I'll order the other ones. Because I think there's at least two out and a fourth one coming. And honestly, I'd be all up for like just ordering the rest if I like it. You know, I feel the same way about Twisted Love, for example. Probably the same way about these two as well. So this next one I got because it's supposed to be able to break your heart. And it's been a while since I have cried over a book. So I was like, I need to find something that is heartbreaking. <laughs> and so I got Pack Up the Moon by Kristen Higgins, which is about a man who is a widower at the age of 30, and because his dead wife knew that he was gonna sink into this black hole of depression when she passed, she decided to basically set him a, a list of tasks that he had to do to keep his life moving after she's gone. So he's given a task every month for the year after her death, and this includes actually moving on. It kind of reminds me a little bit of P.S. I Love You, but I don't mind it. I've only seen that movie, so I don't mind it. I, I thought it was quite cute. So we'll see how this is in book format. Then I got I got two more. This one, I'm sorry for the condition that it's in, but our delivery company here sucks. <laughs> 
So they like to sometimes dip my packages in water clearly and books as you know are made of paper so they don't handle water very well but the delivery company does not care. And then they're like we'll contact Amazon about it because it's not our problem. As if Amazon just put it in a puddle. <laughs> like I don't- anyway I'm salty. I don't like them. They're, they're causing issues like way bigger issues than just that and or way more issues than just that like I don't want to get into it in this video, but I got Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark, which I think is actually a, a mafia romance, but I'm giving it a shot. I don't have necessarily the best track record, I think, with mafia romances. Having read The Kiss Thief and also, was that Mad Oblivion? Oblivion thing? I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> but I didn't like them because I don't like how women are basically like objects or like business deals. I don't know. It feels weird. So I'm hoping this will be a little bit different, but I don't know. There's something about a wedding night, but like, so they've quite clearly been paired up, but it's just, there's a difference in the way that you talk about the women in these books and how they fight back against this whole concept of them just being like business deals or they're as pawns. So I'm hoping this will handle that in a way that I find respectable. Yeah. Then last one is Marriage for One by LMAs, and I don't actually fully know what this is about, or maybe I've read the synopsis before, but I can't remember. But it says, the only way to secure her dream is to marry a handsome stranger. When Rose and Jack meet, Rose and Jack, that's done on purpose. 100%. She has just lost her uncle and with him her dream of owning a coffee shop. Rose wanted nothing more than to open a cafe in her uncle's building. But his will is clear. The building goes to Rose's husband, not to her. That's messed up, dude. What the heck? Then his lawyer, Jack, offers an unusual solution. She can marry him. She'll get the cafe and he'll get the building. For some reason, Rose agrees. It might be a marriage of convenience, Love that. But it's anything but simple. Despite it being his idea, Jack is unbearably surly. But then he does something that shows Rose he might just have a softer side. Maybe love can start with a contract, but will Rose still feel that way when she learns the full terms of their deal? Marriage of convenience. I love it. Fake dating. I love it. I don't know if that's fake dating, but like the whole like... I love that. I don't... I can't explain it. <laughs> I think fake dating is probably, for me, the just, like, I love enemies to lovers in fantasy romance as much as I love fake dating in just romance. I think those are my top tropes in those two genres, so I'm excited. But those were my romance books. Nine. That's pretty cool. That's more than I had a fantasy. Let's move on to the last two books, which are graphic novels. So I'm just gonna get these down. <laughs> By the way, if you have any romance books that are kind of in the same like genre as those, let me know. I'm always ready to be inspired to buy more books. Like, yes. <laughs> Inspire me to spend more money. Not as if my wallet is not already screaming, but I'm here open for suggestions and recommendations. So feel free to just leave them. These two I got because my brother has suggested or recommended them to me and I'm trying to get into graphic novels. So not just manga, but like more than manga. So I got V for Vendetta. Having read Watchmen, which is also by Ellen Moore, I'm pretty convinced, convinced, I'm pretty convinced that I'm gonna like this. It's also considered like a top graphic novel, basically. A frightening and powerful tale of the loss of freedom and identity in a chillingly believable totalitarian world, V for Vendetta stands as one of the highest achievements of the comics medium and a defining work for creators Ellen Moore and David Lloyd. So it's like graphic novel royalty, basically. <laughs> Set in an imagined future England that has given itself over to fascism, this groundbreaking story captures both the suffocating nature of life in an authoritarian police state and the redemptive power of the human spirit which rebels against it. Crafted with sterling clarity and intelligence, V4 Vendetta brings an unequaled depth of characterization and verisimilitude. I've never seen that word before in my life. Hey Siri. Uh -huh. What is verisimilitude? Oh, I pronounced it right. Verisimilitude. The quality or state of being verisim verisimilar. But what does that mean? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Similarity to the truth. Oh, okay. Well, that's meta. To its unflinching account of oppression and resistance. Yeah. So it's like down with authority. Down with the politics or politicians. Down with the state. I kind of like it. I understand the Guy Fawkes thing. Yes. And then the other one is also by Ellen Moore. It's The Killing Joke, Batman The Killing Joke, which is about what like one night, one bad day and like the Joker 
and stuff. And I'm hoping that this is gonna give me the Dark Knight vibes, the movie, because I that's like one of my top favorite movies ever. Obviously, we also have the Joker here, so like, you know. I'm very much into a dark vibe for superheroes and superhero stories. So I've had my eyes on this one ever since he pointed it out at the comic store. I've been drawn to it. So today I just decided on a whim, okay, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> I think it'll be a pretty fast read as well because I think it's a bit on the shorter side. This edition is so funny, so tall, so thin. And then there's a dust jacket on it. Like, it's a comic, it's a graphic book with a dust jacket on it. I don't know. It's a whole lot of Joker. It continues. Like, it continues. There's a lot of Joker. And he is very scary. And I like it. So... I'm gonna have a good time with this, I think. I also suspect that he might have pointed these out so that I, I would buy them so he could borrow them off of me <laughs> or borrow them from me because he would definitely do that. But we'll see, we'll see. He still has my copy of Dracula, which he borrowed in October, no, November 2021. So he can borrow my graphic novels when he gives me that one back. But this is too tall. That's awkward. Ah, um, okay, that's it. <laughs> so that's the book haul for this time for now that's all the book hauling i'm gonna do for now i don't know next one will probably be in my new place so i'm nervous uh but also hopefully i'll have a little bit more room for books i think that might be possible i might upgrade some of my bookcases to taller ones so we got some filling out to do or maybe we don't because i have quite a lot of books next to my bookcases i don't know we'll see there will also be an unhaul before i move because there are some books that i don't want to bring with me so stick around for that if you are interested in unhauls but if you enjoyed this book haul feel free to hit the thumbs up again if you want to check out any of the books they should be linked in the description box and if you want to see more videos like this from me but also videos like bookish unboxings, readathons, reading vlogs, wrap-ups, and TBR videos, all the other booktube stuff, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. But I'm gonna leave you to it for now. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh,